So for this final video, let's delve into documentation and talk about why it's so important. So why do services need to document children's learning? Documentation is an important part of the work of educators and services as it captures meaningful information about children's understandings, dispositions, knowledge and skills and informs the content of the curriculum and the educator's pedagogy. There are two primary reasons why services need to document. Documentation is required by law and the National Quality Standard. For children of preschool age and younger in Australia, education and care services are required by law to document the educational program, assessments of each child's development needs, interests, experience and participation in the program, assessments for each child's progress against the learning outcomes of the program. Documentation for children in out-of-school hours care has slightly different requirements, so it's probably best to refer to the CEQA website for more detail. Documentation needs to consider the period of time a child attends the service, how it will be used by educators. Documentation needs to be understandable by educators and by parents, available to parents on request. The educational program also needs to be on display and accessible to parents. The NQS specifies in element 1.3.3 that families are informed about the program and their child's progress. This is frequently in the form of documentation. Documentation is a key part of the ongoing cycle of planning, whereby services ensure children's learning needs, development and well-being are being met through the educational program. The assessment and planning cycle is the ongoing process of observing and analysing what children know, can do and understand, documenting, planning, implementing and reflecting. This is specified in NQS element 1.3.1. The planning process helps educators in partnership with children, families and other professionals to plan effectively for current and future learning, to communicate about learning, progress, wellbeing and development, to determine progress, to identify any additional support that might be needed, and to evaluate the effectiveness of learning opportunities as well as reflecting on pedagogy. So why is it important to share documentation with families? As previously mentioned, Australian services are required to do this by law and to meet the national quality standard. And families are children's first and most influential teachers. Families know their own child best and they can provide the knowledge, insight and perspective on their child's learning, development and well-being. The education program needs to be based on the developmental needs, interests and experiences of each child. Forming partnerships between the service and each family will mean that each child's learning outcomes are more likely to be achieved. Partnerships enhance connection and continuity between a child's home and service, and partnerships place children's outcome at the forefront of decision making. As well, partnerships that are built on relationships, respect, trust and communication work most effectively. Partnerships are based on the foundation of understanding each other's expectations and attitudes and build on the strength of each other's knowledge. Sharing documentation allows the service to communicate their knowledge of children's learning, development and well-being with families. And this in turn provides further opportunity for input from families for shared decision making. Communication and shared decision making build a platform for the building of relationships, respect and trust. So what sort of documentation is shared with families? Key items that need to be documented and shared with families are the educational program, assessments of each child developmental needs, interests, experiences and participation in the program, progress of children against the learning outcomes of the program. One of the strengths of the approved learning frameworks and the NQS and the related regulatory standard is that while acknowledging the important role of documentation, they're not prescriptive about how this is done. However, documentation needs to be readily understood. It needs to be meaningful, relevant and achievable. There are no mandated templates or programs or a one-size-fits-all way in which documentation needs to be undertaken. And that's in recognition that each service and each community is unique. So it's important to consider what format will best suit your children, families, educators and community. 
Is the documentation understood by families? And how do you know that? Each service and community has different strengths and priorities, and these will change over time. Different teams of educators may also have different preferences and styles in communicating. You need to find something that works for you and your team. Documentation needs to be meaningful, relevant, but most importantly, achievable. There are many tools available to assist educators to organise and share documentation, but it's the level of engagement and reflection that will determine the usefulness and relevance. Are there key questions that educators and services should be asking when documenting? Some key questions on documentation to reflect on both individually and collectively as a team include exploring the why, the what, the who and the how. So why are you documenting? What are the requirements under the law, the regulation and the standards? Is it informing your services educational program and planning? Does it allow you to demonstrate how children are making progress towards the learning outcomes? How are children participating? What are you documenting? Be selective about what you're documenting as it's impossible and unrealistic to document all of the rich experiences and learnings that occur every day. Are you documenting the learning process, not just the final product, such as an attractive piece of artwork? Don't miss the learning that may come from the rich interactions. And sometimes these can be difficult to record if you are in the moment. You need to think about whether documentation is taking you away from quality interactions and experiences. Are you capturing the children's voices and their ideas in the planning and the documenting and evaluation? Have you asked children's permission to take the photo or to display their work? It's important to consider the convention on the rights of the child. It's also important to think about who you're documenting for. Does it reflect the needs of your whole community? For example, balancing what's achievable by educators versus what's desired by families. Is it realistic, achievable and relevant for your service? Ask your community for feedback on current documentation and seek out their preferences. Are you reviewing this over time as your community, your families and children change and evolve? For example, as part of the enrolment process for new families that join your community, is it accessible and understandable? This is particularly important for communities with families from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. A range of strategies may be needed. It's also important to consider how you are documenting. Many services are taking up digital forms of documentation to replace or augment their paper-based formats. Digital documentation can suit some services as it can increase connection to communities by being accessible via portable devices and facilitate communication to extended family overseas or interstate. It can also be an efficient way to organise documentation and provide opportunities to reflect on curriculum use and other aspects of practice. Again, we need to consider the what, why and who of documentation. In considering digital documentation, it's important to ask some key questions. Why are you choosing a digital format? Who is the organisation? What are their values in relation to children and their learning? Who owns the data and the information collected? What happens when a family leaves a service? Does the portfolio travel with the child? Does the company comply with the Australian privacy principles? What's the cost to families and or the service? What if a family wants to opt out of the digital documentation? How will they receive other forms of documentation? What if a family doesn't want images of their child included in images sent to families? How is this managed? Does the documentation process encourage deep engagement with the children's learning or is it a tick the box format? Is it easy to use and therefore doesn't take away from rich engagement with children and families? Can it be customised to suit your practice and curriculum? Does it align with the approved learning frameworks and incorporate the elements and standards in Quality Area 1 that relate to educational program and practice? Does it assist educators to demonstrate and articulate how their programs and their practices align with the learning frameworks, the NQS and the regulatory standards? So I really believe that documentation is a very important part of our work with children and families. It is a professional responsibility, but it's also important to ensure what we document is meaningful and relevant, but also importantly, that it's achievable. 
So that's the end of our four-part series with Rhonda. We hope you feel more informed and inspired to go onto the ASEQA website to learn more about the NQF.